Good morning, church. Aloha kakahiyaka. That is good morning in the Hawaiian language. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Torrance, whether you are here in the sanctuary or tuning in on internet through YouTube or Facebook Live, whether you've been coming here or tuning in for the first time or a guest, first time guest this morning, know that whoever you are and wherever you are in your journey in faith, this is home. You are always welcome here. We have a lot of things to go through this morning. Um, while standing over there, I saw a lot of backpacks coming in. So this must be the blessing of the Backpack Sunday. And it's a special time for our children to bring in their backpacks and be blessed. Also, I'm sure you are all aware that fires have been going on in the island of Maui in Hawaii. Actually, in the historic Lahaina district, the United Methodist Church of Lahaina has been totally destroyed. Thankfully, the, all the members and the pastor, they were evacuated in time. But we know many have perished and many more are still unaccounted for. So we will remember our siblings, not only at, at the Lahaina United Methodist Church, but our siblings in Christ in the island of Maui. And to that, there is already a fund set up. Of course, we all know about OMCOR. If you wish to contribute to the rehabilitation of the island of Maui, especially those who are in need, you may write a check to OMCOR and in the memo line, just put in OMCOR slash Maui Fire or OMCOR Lahaina. They will know that. Um, I'm I know there's been so many funds that have been set up. Uh, we know that the Hawaii district of the UMC, they have set up their own fund also. But so there is less confusion for us here. We may write our checks to Umkor slash Maui Fire, and it will get there, and it will help not only our fellow United Methodists, but all the people in need in the island of Maui. So, uh, and if those of you who are here tuning in on the internet, you may go to our website and there's a, there's a portal there where we can contribute and do the same. So we can contribute online and we can contribute here by writing our checks. Also, um, like I said, if you're tuning in on Facebook Live, it will be good if you can subscribe uh, to YouTube and uh, so that uh, you will always be uh, able to access our worship services whenever it is proper and, uh, and convenient for you to join in in our worship services. And with that, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. And to prepare ourselves for worship, let us join together in the responsive call to worship. Beloved disciples, welcome. As we gather, what are you seeking? We seek God's presence all around us. Beloved disciples, if God's presence is all around us, what are you seeking? Beloved disciples, if God is among you, what are you seeking? Beloved disciples, if God is in the face of your neighbor, what are you seeking? Using 
As we gather today, may we meet God in our seeking and in our finding. Amen. And if you are able, please rise for the singing of our opening hymn. Do we have children? Children, please come forward with your backpack. All right, it seems like you are going to school. God is good all the time. 
Okay, you still remember, that's good. Okay, you, you guys are ready to go to school? I know, I know. So, the summer vacation is almost over, right? Said, what? We did something special during the summer. Do you know what that is? Memorizing Bible verses. So let's check for the last time. Let's check what we learned, memorize it. One, two, three. Rejoice. Always. I say rejoice. Okay. Okay. And next one. Okay, one, two, three. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay. What's the next one? Uh, this is an easy one, right? Okay, you are the light of the world. But it has a, the practice in it. What practice was it? Remember? Yeah, every morning you wake up, go to the bathroom or in the, in standing in front of a mirror, and you say to yourself, what? You are the light of the world. Okay? Are you doing it, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, next one. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Okay, sign language. Do you remember sign language? Do you guys remember sign language? Okay. Trust. Okay, trust is holding a thick rope. One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let's do it again one more time. One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's great. Okay. Next one, also sign language. I'm not sure you guys have remembered this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Do you remember sign language? Okay. You shall love your neighbor. What's neighbor? Neighbor, neighbor, as, as yourself. Okay, one more time. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, very good. And the last Sunday, we memorized this. I know some of you didn't come to church last Sunday, so... What is, one, two, three. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. So who's I here? Jesus? God? Okay. So the reason I picked this is because you guys are studying school. So that's why this is the, like a message for you, actually. Okay? So do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Okay. You know, when I was little, I was really afraid going to school. Be honest with you. Because, you know, there are some bullies at, at school. You know, so they always kind of bully me because I guess I'm smart and handsome. I don't know. <laughs> so that's why one of the reasons that I was going to I was afraid to go to school, but, you know, these words really helped me to go to school with, you know, because, oh, God is with me. So, you know, I was able to go to school and finish the school and become a pastor, right? So, uh, we're going to bless your backpack today because, you know, we want to encourage you. We want to really encourage you to, you know, don't be afraid, you know, because God is with you. Okay? So that's the message with the blessings. So, okay, let's bless the backpacks today. 
Parents, come forward, please. Come forward, parents. Oh. I need your help. Okay, stand up, let's stand up. Okay, parents, pick the cross. Or is the open? Pick. Where is it? No. Ah, can you bend? Pick a uh, cross each the, for the each backpacks. I don't know how to open it. Oh, okay. Can you pick and then pass it? Pick two. Paul is there, so. No, you. Parents pick it. Parents will tie the cross in the middle of ritual. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. It's hard to put it in. Pick another one. Yeah. I found a, a ritual for blessing of backpacks on the disciples ministry. So I'm going to use that ritual. But in the right before we pray, I want parents to tie the cross on the book bag. Okay? Okay. Today we have before us backpacks to be carried to and from school by these children and youth. We don't have youth. Come on. <laughs> Nathan, where are you? Oh. Parents, come. Parents, come. These backpacks will contain work to be done, work that has been written, books to be studied, tools to complete homework, notebook, pencil, pen, compass, crayon, rules, scissors, glue, glue sticks, and other items used for school work will find their way in and out from of these backpacks. Some days, so much stuff will fill this backpack that students may find it difficult to walk. Other days, they will be light and nearly empty. But on each and every day, these backpacks represent work required of the student gathered here. And as in every aspect of our lives, we bring this before God for blessings. So now is the time to tie the cross on the book bags. Did you do it? You already? Okay. You know, the blessing that we pass from God is, you know, using our, uh, using us to bless uh, them. So we can, uh, parents, hold your children and hold the congregation, reach your hands, reach your hands, two hands, if you are able to. Okay? Okay. You done? Okay. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift up to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings and they committed themselves 
to study and learn in, in school year ahead. We ask you, God, for your blessing, each one of them. Father, we ask your blessing on these backpacks. They will hold school works of each student and will be carried from home to school and school to home. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surround them each school day. God, we pray as well for the teachers and school administrators. May they be also sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surround them with the love and care as well. Especially, God, we pray that you protect our teachers and students. We pray in the name of Jesus, who seek to follow day by day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You can go back to classroom. Hello, church. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you. Okay. Uh, you heard uh, Bill uh, made an announcement about the uh, Maui situation. So if you want to uh, give offering to that uh, particular Offering just right on uh, Umcor and uh, Maui, and uh, I I mentioned this before, but Umcor is the 100% donation. All the donation is not going to the administrative fee. It's 100% go to the, uh, the disaster site. Okay, because all the the regular offering. But the apportionment support already supporting UMCOR's administrative you know, work. So the particular this offering, UMCOR offering is will be 100% used for that uh, that reason, purpose. Okay. So if you wanna uh, put in an offering, that'd be great. And okay, flower offering are given by Nye family. In celebration of August 9 wedding, Wendy and Trescott Baylock in Hawaii. And also August 18, master's degree graduation of Tiffany in Florida. Wow, great family celebration, okay. And we know that uh, daughter, they are daughters of Dr. Frank and Vicky, so. Uh, congratulations and pray for the family members, okay? And by Flo Roy, in celebration of August birthdays of Lagaspi siblings, and by uh, Viola Gracia Lopez, reminding her husband Al's birthday on August 11, and her father, Reverend uh, Valdez Gracia's death anniversary of 20th. Thank you. Stillwater Family Service Center food basket donated by Virginia Clark in memory of Robert Clark's death anniversary and by Lucy Toriaga. Toriaga, yeah. In celebration of uh, August 16th birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> Yay. Okay. 
And uh, last Sunday, we had a, a missionary from uh, Navar Navarros, and we decided that uh, we usually have a Navarros month. Fundraising for month is September, but we moved to August. So if you want to support the mission and uh, ministry in uh, Navarros, then put it, uh, you know, offering envelope says Navarros, and that will go to uh, Navarros directly, so, okay? Uh, Sunday school registration begin today. I mean, I, I've been trying to, uh, like, uh, set the structure of the education, our uh, church education system, but uh, we haven't really finished all, all the complete the structure yet, but registration, we will start the registration today. So if you have a child uh, for the Sunday school class and then you, you need to register, uh, for the, put in a registration, please. Okay, and then a women's group meeting August 27, uh, right after church. And then Viola Garcia Lopez visiting us, family is in Carson. Garcia family is healing prayers for Ophelia. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. Uh, Yoli, uh, we need teachers. We need teachers for the August and September. I think I made an announcement uh, last Sunday, but nobody listened. <laughs> okay, uh, can I speak up? Okay, we need more teachers. Okay, <laughs> August and September, so please sign up for that. And uh, uh, Betty, uh, our former education director, son is back in the hospital, so with lung issue, so pray for him and family. And please welcome Joanna Bado, Bado, friends of March and Marshall. Okay, there she is. <laughs> welcome. Okay. Any other announcement or joys and concern I missed? Yes, Esther. Huh? Birthday? Minda. I didn't hear. Minda's birthday? Yes. No, Minda's here. Yes. Birthday? Okay. Birthday. Minda's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other? Uh, okay. I almost died last week. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a long story, but anyway, I put it my car maintenance, regular maintenance yesterday, and then they found that uh, shoelace on my brake pad. Shoelace on my brake, brake pad. The, the service advisor said that within 15 years of his work there, he sent two times. First one was a car wreck, and then after that, they checked the brake and then there was a shoelace on it. And then I did not really get into the car wreck because I went to the regular checkup. So they found it and they fixed it. So I almost died last week. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other? Any other joys and concerns? Okay. Let us pray. Eternal God. We are so grateful for the new life that you've given us each and every day. God, we thank you for your presence and your guidance upon our complicated lives. God, we need you. We need your light. We need your strong hands that hold our lives because there are so many noises and chaos in this world. So be with us.
protect us with your spirit and guide us with your plan and your will. This morning, God, we lift up to you our church family members who are struggling with illnesses or some other difficult situations, some challenges that they are facing. God, we ask you to provide your true solution, your true healing upon all these struggles. God, we believe you are the mighty healer. We believe that you are mighty creator. So God, we ask you to put your healing hands upon them so that they can heal from illnesses. God, let them feel your presence so that they could find the right direction that they need to go. All this difficult situation, help them to have faith in you so that they can find uh, true peace and comfort in their heart. God, we thank you for your presence and your calling this morning. We come here to worship you as a church. So be with us and provide your true blessing upon us throughout this worship. Help them to recharge our spirit so that we can confidently go out this world with your spirit and your guidance. God, we thank you. Be with us and bless each family of our, church, our congregation, As, especially all these children that they are starting a new school year. Give them your confidence, your guidance, your blessings upon them. Let us continue in prayer with the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespassers against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Amen. The ushers come forward, please. We have a group of people for offertory music. from the book of Micah, and it's a very simple song, but very powerful. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of your God? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of your God? What does
Please join in the prayer of dedication for giving God the first offering you ask for is the giving of ourselves, loving you and others boldly, refusing to let our fear of the storms around us keep us from taking risks. Forgive us for times when you have called us to leave our places of comfort and we've ignored the call. Forgive us when our giving has not grown beyond our safety zone, but you blessed our gifts and us anyway. For those times when we dared to put our foot outside the boat and then sank up to our knees, thank you for not taking your hand away. For all this, we give thanks in the holy name of Jesus our Savior, Amen. The scripture reading is from Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Get your hymnal. And it's page 314. We're going to sing this together. Uh, uh, typically, the choir would be singing at this point, but since they are on break, you are all the choir. All right, so let's try it from the beginning. Sit nice and tall in your chair, good posture, good breathing. We're gonna do our warm-ups really quick. No, I'm kidding.
Thank you. That was great. That's uh, in the garden is one of my favorite hymns too. So, <clears throat> a little girl had uh, recently received a gift from parents. One, a new watch and a bottle of perfume. When a family asked the pastor over for dinner, the girls, the girl badly wanted to tell the pastor about her new gift, new watch and the perfume. But her mother insisted, insisted that she wait until the dinner is over, not interrupting the meal time. Not wanting to disobey, but not able to contain her excitement, the little girl leaned over to the pastor during the dinner, and she whispered to him, saying, if you hear a little noise and smell something, it's me. <laughs> I'm still learning some new words in English. Some words I learned painfully a couple of weeks ago, someone keyed my car. I didn't know that, that words key used that purpose. Keyed it. Uh, I think that's an evil thing, you know. And I learned some English idioms as well. It's very interesting, interesting to see how the idioms describe the perspective using language to make it more visible or and understandable. Some idioms, I found it very interesting. For example, idiom like an elephant in the room. Have you heard that? An elephant in the room. It's very interesting. A huge elephant in the room, but nobody. People pretending, not looking at it. Another similar uh, idioms, sweep under the rock. I found it very interesting. I mentioned these idioms because I want to talk about something that I never mentioned. You probably heard it what I have never mentioned about, what's happening in our denomination. It's called disaffiliation. Because of a certain theological perspective, some United Methodist Church wanted to cut the relationship with the denomination. The term dis disaffiliation and the, all this process is complicated. While they are in the process of disaffiliation, many churches are struggling. Many churches are fighting over within the congregation. I have not really mentioned a single thing about it because it's heart heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Some churches I saw fight over this issue, and they ended up splitting all church. And some churches, they close up. They close the church. It's really heartbreaking situation. You know, it's really hard to build up a church. Amen? It's really hard to build up. We witnessed last Sunday, the missionaries, Navarros, in Taiwan, they are really working so hard. 
They spend so much effort and energy and time trying to build up a church. And people are destroying it over certain theological perspective. What is a church? What is church? We all know church is not a building. We all know this gathering of God's people is the church. Amen? We are the church. But somehow in this generation, many churches try to build in, to build huge industry. Like a Babel Tower. So church, I think it's time to rethink about what church really is. In the Old Testament, the church, the word for church is two words I can find in the Old, Old Testament about church. One is kahal, kahal, meaning kahal is a community called by God. A community called by God. A church is gathered and called by God. It's kahal in Old Testament. So community of being called by God is a church. Another word we can find in Old Testament is eda. Means a place or gathering initiated and appointed by God. It's a church. Edda. In the New Testament, we all know what church, the, the words, ecclesia, ecclesia, right? Ecclesia, uh, the word ecclesia, there are two parts of this word ecclesia. Ec means something from, ecclesia means the same thing. People are called by God. So from people called by God and building up, the church, that's ecclesia, gathering of people, God's people, called by God. That's a church in New Testament. But church these days are facing tremendous challenges. So many unexpected things happening, including COVID situation three years. Because of all the difficult situation, church got hurt and challenged. Some churches closed. The fact is we have to refocus. We have to refocus the true meaning of church, the foundation of church that may, we may have lost. I don't know whether you remember the message that I preached several months ago. You probably don't remember, right? About getting used to it. Remember? No? Once we're getting used to it, we lost the foundation of it. Once we're getting used to it, we lost the, the appreciation. Once we are getting used to it, we lost the spirit of gratitude. Remember when I came here last year, I mentioned that this is beautiful weather. I love it. Thank you, God. But a few months later, I found myself getting used to it, this weather. So my appreciation and gratitude slowly going down. And even turn to, oh, I deserve it. Nothing special. So getting used to it is the dangerous thing. When we're getting used to church, there's another story. When we're getting used to church, then we are losing the foundation of church. 
Sometimes we try to become too comfortable in getting used to it. And church slowly became something else. Today's verse 11 and 12, he himself granted, he himself granted that some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saint for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Building what? The body of Christ. Church is not building our bodies, what we are comfortable with, what we are familiar with. Church is building up the body of Christ. Verse 13 and 14, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of full statue of Christ, we must no longer be children and following the definition of children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's tricky and their craftiness and deceitful shaming. Church is not supposed to do that. But a lot of churches, the trend of this world come into the church and totally destroying the church. Actually, we did not read verse 1 through 6. In those verses, Apostle Paul described the seven words, seven words for church. Body, spirit, hope, Lord, faith, baptism, and God. Those seven words describe church, about church. Think about these words. Body, spirit, hope, Lord, faith, baptism, and God. Of course, church is not the building, but church is something alive. Church is life form. It's not just a dead stone. It's a church is a life form, life form of God. Who is moving? Not just a still, moving, communicating, praying for each other, doing God's ministry. That's a church. But these days, a lot of churches fighting over certain theological perspective. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we all know that uh, we call it love chapter, right? There are beautiful words about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love never ends. Isn't that beautiful? And if you have a prophetic power and understand all the mystery and all kind of knowledge, but you don't have love, and you're nothing. Even if you have a prophetic power, certain knowledge and understanding, if you don't have love, it's nothing. Think about intention of Apostle Paul writing this letter to Corinth. What happened in Corinth, church in Corinth? Why Paul, Apostle Paul, write it, this certain letter to church in Corinth? Because they are fighting in the church. They are arguing over some understanding some practice, faith practices. 
they fight, they're fighting in the congregation. So that's why Paul wrote this letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You should have love. Love should be the priority in the church. Do we have love in, as our priority? Our priority? <laughs> My tongue is not working today. We see the trend of churches. They picked certain theology over love. They picked politics over love. They picked, I mentioned this before, second amendment over the commandment of Jesus Christ. That's church the trend of this, this generation. But think about what Jesus said. Love your neighbor. Love your God. And even love your enemy. Or some people, enemies. Church is supposed to be a gathering of God's people who are working together to build the kingdom of God. So church, instead of focusing on imperfect theology, instead of focusing on one-sided perspective and understanding, as a church, we need to really focus on what our Lord Jesus Christ told us to do. Think about it. When I prepared this message, if, if Jesus thought that the human sexuality issue is extremely important, it's important enough that church could close down and divide and separate whatever, then Jesus would have mentioned it. If that issue is so important that church could affect, then Jesus probably mentioned in his words. But I never found any word from our Lord Jesus Christ addressing that issue. Remember, a woman who committed adultery was brought out to the street court for punishment of stoning. Even in that place, the message of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was addressing forgiveness. Forgiveness. So church, let's refocus the foundation of church. We need to make church a church. We need to rethink, return, repent, to go back to the foundation and basic of church that our Lord Jesus Christ was originally intended to build. Paul wrote this letter to church of Ephesus. He emphasized about become a real church in his letter, but you know, church in Ephesus was very good church. Good example of other early churches. Expl exemplary church. There's another word that I learned. But Apostle Paul kept encouraging to think about it, the church becoming the true church. The true church is when God's people gather to follow God's will and gather together to build the kingdom of God with all of our hearts and mind. That's a church. For that, 
you and I are called. God called you and I to build up a great, true, meaningful church. I mentioned that it's like a puzzle. There's a beautiful puzzle piece, puzzle that God created, and God put each one of us, put it in a puzzle to make complete. That's what we are called to be a church. I really pray, I really pray that you and I together will be able to fulfill the part of entrusted to us to restore and rebuild the true church that we may have forgotten because we are too getting used to it. So church, let's build the kingdom of God together. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the message that you've given us this morning. God, we are comfortable, somewhat comfortable and getting used to of church, being a church. But you encourage us to rethink about church, what we do, whom we follow. God, help us to refocus, help us to return, repent, so that we can truly follow you for the kingdom of God. Help us, God, to be your church together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, for closing hymn, uh, it's not familiar hymn, but uh, I think it's go with uh, today's message. So let's hear Honey play whole song, and then we'll sing together. Okay? So once she go to like a last line, then we all stand up, okay? You got it? Let me explain again. Okay.
church, beloved family of Christ, we are called by God, and God is with us. Let's make church, a true church together, for God is with us. God the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.